Today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about the seven and a quarter inch dual bevel sliding miter saw by Milwaukee. It, I don't think this saw is meant for doing this kind of thing. It just started to burn a little bit. I think for what you get, it's worth the value. Locks in place solid. I'm really happy with this saw. In this video, I'm going to cover things like cut capacity, some of the features of the saw, some of the things I like, and if there's anything that I don't like. My initial thoughts when I first purchased the saw was I couldn't believe how lightweight it was, which made me a little skeptical. Um, I had read some reviews, people either love the saw or they hate it. Um, I'm a huge Milwaukee fan, so I've been looking at this saw for a long time, reading reviews, and I figured I'd buy it myself and try it out and see how it works. So straight out the box, I noticed how lightweight it was, even with a 8 amp battery and the Milwaukee stand um, supports here. You can see how lightweight it is. It's easy to pick up, easy to carry, two convenient handles. There's also the handle on top that makes it convenient for carrying, which is super great for on the job site, loading and unloading. To compare, I'm used to using the corded Bosch 12 inch um, zero clearance miter saw. That saw is super heavy. It's not easy to carry. I can barely lift it myself. So I wanted something a little more light, compact, because when doing work for customers, it's nice to be able to have a more portable saw. The capacity of this so far has been great. I haven't needed anything larger. That saw was actually probably bigger than anything I'd ever needed. The price point for this saw when I purchased it was $525 Canadian plus tax, which when you compare to other saws, it's average. It's not a great price. But uh, I think for what you get, it's, a, it's worth the value. I should mention that's for the bear kit. It didn't come with a battery, but I have a huge Milwaukee lineup with plenty of batteries. As you can see, I purchased the Milwaukee stand at the same time as the saw, and they threw that in for $100 Canadian plus tax, which if you've looked at the stands, that is a really good price. Maybe later in the video, I'll mention my thoughts on that stand as well. So we'll get into some of the key features of this saw. It is a dual bevel saw, which means it miters 45 degrees both directions. It also tilts for the bevel 45 degrees. It can actually go past 45 degrees if you adjust these screws here, if you wanna to get to 45 and a half. I believe it goes up to 48 degrees but I'm leaving it at 45 degrees because it's nice that it automatically locks in there. This is a sliding saw as well. And my first thoughts taking it out of the box, um, the slide just doesn't feel smooth. You can hear it kind of, it sounds like there's some friction there. The cuts are straight, it doesn't wobble. So I don't know what's going on with that. The, the setup in the store was super smooth and quiet. So maybe I just need to add a little more oil and it'll kind of break itself in. There's a dust collection bag on the back, which contains a lot of the dust for not having a proper dust collection system. It does a good job in holding the dust and collecting it. This material clamp is something that I don't usually use on saws. I take it off, get it out of the way. It's been nice to have for doing trim work. When you have longer pieces, it's nice to have, it's basically an extra set of hands. It's got two ways of adjustment. It's got your micro adjust handle here and also your quick adjust here, which helps slide it up and down. It clamps on nice and tight, works really well. I'm happy with it. The adjustable fences are super easy as well. Um, it's a quick adjustment. You loosen the wing nut, you can slide it back and forth and they also come off very easily. With my Bosch saw, there was a wire connecting this to the saw, which is good and bad. It was nice because you'll never lose them, but it was kind of annoying because when you need to get them out of the way, they just kind of hang there in the way. One of the things that I didn't do with this saw yet is actually calibrate it. Um, so I can go ahead and show you out the box how accurate the 90 degree and 90 degree up and down actually is. So you want to keep your square tight against the fence and bring it just to touch the blade. And then as you bring it out, it should maintain that distance and just glide along it, which you can see this is. So it's already calibrated out the box, which is nice. Another thing that you want to check for is your bevel to ensure that that is at a perfect 90 degrees. What I use is a speed square. I lay it flat on the miter saw, lift the guard out of the way. And again, you want to bring the square over just to touch the blade. And then when you come down, there should be no resistance, but there should be no gap either. It should just maintain the same space. And this is perfectly calibrated, so good job, Milwaukee. I've heard 
some reviews, people say that it's out of calibration and they return the saw, get another one, it's still out of calibration. These are super easy to calibrate yourself. If you are interested in a video on how to calibrate your saw properly, leave a comment, let me know, and I can do one of those. As far as adjusting your saw for bevels, miters, things like that, it's pretty straightforward, similar to other saws. On this model, you loosen up the nut back here and it will bevel to the left. But as you can see, you can't bevel over to the right. It automatically locks back at 90 degrees. So what you have to do is slightly tilt it to the left. There's this little black button here. You pull it out and it lets you bevel to the right. Once you get it back up to zero, 90 degrees, you tighten that up and you're good to go. For adjusting the miter, it's very similar to other saws. You'll lift up the latch underneath here and it allows you to rotate it right and left and then stop where you need it, push down on that, and that locks it in place. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's get into the demo. So I'm gonna show some 90 degree cuts, 45 degree cuts with different materials, different thicknesses and different widths to show the actual capacity and what the saw can do. What I have here is some window and door casing. It's three quarter inch poplar by two and a half inches wide. So one of the nice features that this saw has, it has a light that you can actually turn on before you start cutting. So there's a little button on top, you push it, and that creates a shadow line for your cut. One thing about this saw, it is a lot quieter than my Bosch saw. And the nice thing is it has a break on it, which means when you let go of the trigger, it stops within seconds, whereas the Bosch continues to spin and wind down. So I cut through the trim super easy. Let's see how it does with a two by six. That was pretty effortless, very comparable to a corded saw, which that's the ultimate test. Whenever you're purchasing a cordless tool, I find that you wanna make sure that it can handle the same capacity that your corded tools can do, because if it can't, there's not really much point in buying it. I'm really impressed with how this cut through the two by six. Clean cut, no burn marks. Uh, the saw didn't bog down at all. Now that we've showed cutting trim and a one and a half inch thick material, Let's test the slide, see how far you can actually get through. We're gonna test that on quarter inch plywood. So that is the 90 degrees. I'm gonna set it up at 45. So that's about eight inches eight and a quarter actually. So at 90 degrees, it can cut eight and a quarter, which means you can cut up to eight and a quarter, obviously. <laughs> so now that we've shown cutting 90 degrees, 45 degrees, um, we're gonna bevel the saw and see how that performs with the trim and with the two by material. So that cut through no problem as well. There is a little bit of tear out on the backside but that's kind of to be expected. Otherwise clean cut. Now let's try with the two by material. I should mention this is my first time cutting two by material with this saw. I've only used it for trim work up until now. I'm gonna find out for myself as well. So I didn't love that. <laughs> you could probably tell, I don't know if you could hear it. it. I don't think this saw is meant for doing this kind of thing. It can, it's fully capable for sure. Um, you could see it just started to burn a little bit. I could hear that it struggled a bit. I wasn't pushing full force, but I would say if you need to cut this on the job site, it can be done. Would I recommend buying a saw for this sole purpose? No. Keep in mind, this is the seven and a quarter inch saw. So maybe the 10 inch or 12 inch is a little better for this kind of material, but I do more trim work than anything. So the seven and a quarter inch saw is what I purchased. Now that we have these cut, I can show another way to check your calibration. Um, this is a square piece of material already. So I know that this should be 90 degrees if the saw is calibrated properly. So it's pretty much the same thing. You line your square up flush with the edge, bring it up to your cut and it should be right on. Perfectly flat along the cut and it's perfectly flush along the plywood there. So we know that this saw is calibrated at 90 degrees. So this is a Milwaukee stand designed for the miter saw. Can you see my Crocs? You can see, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I'm a little disappointed with is it doesn't have wheels on it, which would have been nice if you wanted to move the saw 
with it still attached, which you can't really do. The legs have these little bars where you push, which makes it super easy to open. One thing to note, the stand is extremely heavy. <laughs> it, it is, like it weighs probably twice as much as the saw itself. A nice feature, it has an adjustable leg here. So if you're on uneven ground, you can level out the saw. Putting the saw on the stand is super easy as well. You clip in the front. There's two little handles underneath that you pull, set it down, and it's locked in, just like that. These extensions slide out really smooth, really easily. They can adjust up and down, and they also have a feature that the sides fold up, which acts as a stop. So if you're making repeated cuts, you set it up where you need it. It's a pretty basic stand, nothing fancy about it, but it seems to be made really well, it's strong. So overall, I would give this saw an eight and a half out of 10. I can't quite give it a 10, only because, like I said before, just the way that it slides isn't perfectly smooth. Like the Bosch saw I have, it's the zero clearance, so it folds, it doesn't actually slide, and it's super smooth. Um, there's no movement side to side, the dust bag is kind of in the way of the locking for the slide, which isn't a big deal. I mean, it's it, it could be put on the side, which would make it a little better. All in all, that's not a make it or break it. When comparing this model to the 10 inch, this is significantly smaller, which is why I went with this saw. I felt that the 10 inch just took up too much room. I wanted something really compact, easy to move from job to job, in and out of the truck, um, up and down stairs. This saw is perfect for that, super lightweight. I'm super happy about that. I haven't noticed a difference between this and a corded saw. Um, it's kept up with my needs. It's a sturdy, well-built saw. I really do like the feature of the light that shows the shadow line rather than a laser. In the past, I've used a saw with a laser and it's just, I prefer to see the shadow line of exactly where the blade is gonna land. Other than the slide being a little bit rough, all the other motions are super smooth. Everything works really well, easy to adjust, very smooth, locks in place solid. I'm really happy with this saw. If you're looking for a cordless saw and you already have a Milwaukee lineup, I would highly recommend this saw. This specific model, the seven and a quarter inch, I would recommend for anybody that's going from job site to job site, doing trim work, even decking. Deck boards would be nice to cut on this, fence boards would be great. This saw is perfect for somebody looking for a lightweight, alternative to your heavy corded compound saw. This saw can cut up to eight and a quarter inches, which is plenty for most people in my opinion. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I'd love for you to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos in the future.